QuickBooks Online 2023, reversing entry accounts receivable sales. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We started up in a prior presentation using the 30 day free trial. We also have opened the free QuickBooks support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a youtube page we also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. It's online sample company. If you want the two open at the same time, use incognito or another browser. You can open the incognito window if using Google Chrome with the three dots in the browser incognito window, typing into the search engine, QuickBooks Online test drive. We're using the sample company to compare the accounting view, the one Get Great Guitars is in, and the business view, the one the sample company is in. You can toggle between the two by going to the cog up top and switch the view down below. We're opening a few tabs to put reports in like we do every time. Right click on the tab up top to duplicate it. Right click on the tab up top to duplicate it again. Then we're gonna go back to the tab to the middle. The reports on the left hand side open up the favorite report the balance sheet and then don't say it like that everyone loves the balance sheet and then note that if you're in the the sample company or the business view it's down here in the business overview and then the reports on the left hand side back to get great guitars tab to the right we're going to the reports on the left hand side this time the profit and loss closing up the boogie change in the range in 010123 tab 022823 tab let's see it month by month por favor run it to refresh it there it is tab to the left closing the boogie those ranges those are changes 010123 tab 022823 let's see the month by month side by side run it to refresh it there's where we have it so we've been doing adjusting entries as of the cutoff date for us being February 28. The adjusting entries being something we do at the end of the period, at the end of the month or the end of the year. We did one related to the accounts receivable, pulling in a receivable or invoice that was entered in the following period, but for which the work was done before the cutoff date. So to see that, let's look at some sub ledgers as well that we have to be concerned with because there's gonna be a subledger for the receivable and the inventory we also have to deal with and be careful of, mindful about, anytime we make these kind of transactions to those type of accounts. Let's go to the tab to the right. What happens if you don't, if you're not careful? Right click and duplicate. The bookkeeper gets mad at you. That's what happens. And you mess up their whole thing. And then that's not good. So let's go to the reports on the left hand side. Close up the hamburger scroll down and we're looking for who owes you let's look at the customer balance detail report for the detail on the customer on the ar so that's one report that we have to be dealing with where we saw down below we added another customer for zzz down here to put our uh, adjusting entry in place with a journal entry which is unusual because all other open transactions are in place from basically invoices generally or payments if there was a deposit which we'll deal with in the future right click on the tab again duplicate again let's do the same for the inventory report so i'm going to go down to the reports on the left hand side close up the hand boogie type in the inventory we're looking for the valuation summary report let's do that as of the end of march 033123 run it and the reason i did it for the end of march is because we entered a transaction if i look at my flow chart 
we have an invoice that's usually the form when using an accrual based method when sales is recorded. It is the form when QuickBooks will record sales. But we can imagine a situation where the invoice wasn't entered in the period the work was actually done, easiestly seen when you're talking about like a, a job cost system where you have to track the time and then enter the invoice maybe possibly the invoice being entered then after the cutoff even though the work was done before the cutoff and therefore on an accrual basis method we should pull that revenue back into the period it was earned rather than when the invoice was entered that's what we're doing here so last time we entered an invoice after the cutoff date in march we did an invoice that has inventory related to it to add another level of complexity and then we made a journal entry to pull that that invoice back into the current period not by entering an invoice but with an adjusting entry now we're going to reverse that entry so that we're in the proper period in the following month and we don't mess up the accounting department so if i go back on over and we'll say okay let's go back to the first tab and let's extend this one more month let's go to 033123 and then run it so our cutoff date is 228 and then we're going to reverse it as of March. Let's see that on the income statement too. Let's put this out to 033123, run it. So this is most easily seen here on the income statement. The actual invoice was entered in March, but we, we the, the work was actually done in February. Therefore, we did an adjusting entry to record this 500 and 400 included in the line item in February. So that makes the financial statements correct in February. But now if I don't do anything to fix it, I'll have entered it twice in uh, by the time March uh, is in place and it's March 5th is when the transaction took place. So now I have to do a reversing entry. Now remember, you might say, well, why don't I just why don't I just go into the invoice that was entered in the wrong date, we're saying and change the date. And the, the problem is that it's not exactly wrong possibly with regards to the system that the accounting system is using. Maybe they do their invoicing every two weeks for the, for the work that was done in the prior period or something like that. Their system is right for their accounting system. It's just not exactly right on an accrual basis, which is what is requiring the adjusting entry. I don't wanna mess up their system. I just wanna make it correct as of the cutoff date so I can make the financial statement reports correct and then do the reversing entry so they can do whatever they need to do. So last time we did this adjusting entry. So if I can see it if I drill down in here and I look at this journal entry, this is the adjusting entry we did. It's quite complex of an adjusting entry because invoices with inventory and sales tax can be quite complex. What I need to do now is reverse it so that it's not entered twice and the reversing entries happen the first day of the following period in our case cut off 228 the first day and the next period march 1st now to do the reversing the easiest thing to do is to just copy you know maybe, maybe take a screenshot of this you know and then and then reverse it exactly right you might take a screenshot and say okay that's what we did here i'm just gonna put that down here somewhere and then i'll reverse that exactly Let's just think about the process of the reversing with our journal entry up top. And and because a lot of times people get a little bit messed up with these debits and credits, we're going to have to use, in essence, journal entries because it's kind of a complex transaction. We can't just use ledgers. There's not just two accounts affected. And when people use journal entries, they start to think, well, I need to put the debits on top and the credits on the bottom. And then that kind of messes up the 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 ability to just do the opposite that you did before so i wouldn't think about that i'm not going to go i'm going to put the debits on top or anything i'm just going to do the exact same thing and reverse it also note people often try to think about a reversing entry this is an entry similar to a credit memo by basically just trying to imagine what happens in the credit memo or in the reversing entry instead of the easier way thinking about what the normal journal entry is when we enter the invoice, this is the transaction mirroring an invoice with the adjusting entry, and then just doing the opposite, doing the opposite from top to bottom, instead of trying to reshuffle the accounts. 
So here's the transaction we did last time. I'm just gonna reverse it. I'm just gonna put the AR on top and I'm gonna credit it. So usually we would have the debits on top, but that's confusing. I'm gonna put the credit on top because that's the easiest way to imagine what's going on. And then I'm just gonna reverse. Here's the debit to the sales. And then I'm gonna reverse the sales tax. This is going to be a debit to the sales tax. And then the cost of goods sold. We're gonna have a debit to the cost of goods sold. And then the inventory, we're gonna have a credit to the inventory. So we're just doing the exact opposite. I just messed these two up. Hold on a second. Okay, hold on. This needs to be over here. See, even when I just copy it, it's messy. So does that, is that right? Yes. So now we just did, we just basically did the same accounts top to bottom. I think that's the easiest way to visualize it. Reverse the debits and credits, which might be difficult to do in your head because you always want to put the debits on top because that's what you've been trying to do. Resist the urge if it's easier to have an audit trail by not doing that. If it, if it makes it more simple to go back and see what you did or figure out how to do it, then I'll let that rule go because it doesn't it doesn't serve you any purpose. It just complicates uh, things. And if you have a picky supervisor or something, first do this and then put the debits on top after you figured out uh, what you need to do. So that's what we need to do. Remember that the accounts receivable is one of the issues. So because we can't record to AR without having a customer. So we, instead of using the customer we actually made the sale to, we made another customer called ZZZ so that the, all the detail related to them and the sub ledger and the detail in the customer center will hopefully not distract the accounting department. And then the other one is the inventory, which we saw was actually gonna be out of balance because we were allowed to record $400 to it without an inventory item. So it's out of whack, it's out of balance by 400. We're gonna put it back in balance. And that's kind of good that it let us do that in this case, even though it's a little risky because you could, if you're not careful, throw the, the ledger, the sub ledger out of balance. But here it's it's good because now we, we don't have to post something to the sub ledger and mess that up to do our, our adjusting entry. So that is gonna be that. Also note that this should look unnatural with regards to the sales and the cost of goods sold because sales doesn't normally go down. Sales doesn't decrease. So it's gonna look funny when we record it and it should look funny in terms of debits and credits, but it'll make sense because when we when we match it out to the actual invoice, it will, it will nullify the invoice that was entered in February. So what we did, the actual invoice was entered in March, I'm sorry, it was entered in March. We pulled the invoice into February with a journal entry but we didn't delete the transaction entered in March. So now the financial statements are correct as of the cutoff date, February 28th, but it's gonna be entered twice, once in February, once in March. So instead of deleting the item in March, we're gonna nullify what happened in March by reversing the transaction, which will net out against the transaction entered in March so that it'll nullify the transaction. So that's, that's the idea. All right, so let's do it. We're gonna go back on over. We'll enter a journal entry. I'm gonna close this back out and we'll enter the journal entry. So I'm gonna go up and let's go back to our reports, back to tab number one, and we'll hit the plus button. We gotta do it with an actual journal entry because the register isn't gonna, it's too complex of a transaction. All reversing entries are as of the first day of the following period, 3-1, March 1st in our case. And I'm just gonna reverse exactly what we did here. So boom, accounts receivable, A to the R, accounts receivable. And I, I have to put uh, 525 as a credit. I have to put a customer. I'm not gonna put Anderson. I'm gonna put ZZZ, which is the customer I made up just for my purposes so that it shows up at the bottom of the customer center and hopefully doesn't bother anyone and allows us to record our necessary adjustments to the accounts receivable. Then we've got the sales of product. That's gonna be the income account. And that was for 500 that we need to debit that. That should feel unnatural because income is usually always credited. It never goes down typically, but this is a reversing entry. So the rules are accepted. This is an exception 
to the rule is what I'm trying to say. Entry. Stop talking. I can't think when you're talking. Okay. Here we go. And then the next one is going to go to California. California department that the sales tax payable. Okay. And that one should be good. And then we're reversing the cost of goods sold. This one should also look unnatural because cost of goods sold usually only goes up like all expense accounts. And now we're taking it down with a credit. It usually goes up with a debit. We're taking it down with a credit, but that's because it's a reversing. And then the other one is inventory. And inventory, we never post to inventory without a, without a sales receipt or an invoice or a bill or an expense form. But this is the exception because it's an adjusting entry. It's going to put us back in balance. I'm, I'm mindful of the sub ledger. It's not going to mess us up. It's going to actually fix it. All right. So does that look, everything looks good. Is everything Mui B to the N? Not just being man. I'm Mui being. I'm Mui being. So we're going to say, let's save it and close it and check it out. So then we'll go to the tab to the right and check it out, run it. So now we have the adjusting entry for accounts receivable that is in here. There's our adjusting entry in the A to the R, increase in the AR, which makes it right as of the cutoff 228. And then we reversed it. If I go into March, we reversed it in March with the journal entry and that journal entry nullifies itself out in March against the actual invoice, which means it's only just recorded in February. So now you might get into the same question of why did you, why did you enter it as of three one instead of three five? If the invoice was entered in three five, why don't you just enter it in three five and then you won't have five days of it being kind of not exactly right because it's showing like this negative amount for five days. Why don't you just enter it as of three five? Why? Because I want all the reversing entries to be easily found and I'm sacrificing the fact that the financial states statements will not be as perfect in the middle of the month in order to make it as easy as possible for us to be correct as of the periodic statements and to allow the accounting department to do whatever format is easiest for them to do. So I'm going to go back to the tab to the left and let's go to the profit and loss, the P and the L. Notice that we have it nullified. So we once again, adjusting entry, pulled it into the income over here and we're back down to zero on the income statement. And so if I go into the March, we've got the two items, the reversing entry, and then the actual invoice nullifying each other out. It's not going to look correct because you got a negative uh, revenue for five days. But then after that fifth day, when the invoice is in place, it nullifies itself. And I'm okay to have a negative amount showing up for five days because again, we're sacrificing a little bit of inconsistency to have all our reversing entries happen as of one day so we can know where they are. Going back to the tab, same thing happens with the uh, cost of goods sold here. Same thing happens back on over with the sales tax. If I go down to the sales tax, we entered the journal entry for the sales tax to make it right in here. There's the adjusting entry. And then we've got the reversing entry and the, the actual invoice nullifying themselves in the following period. It's not going back down to zero because this is a permanent account as opposed to the income statement accounts. And then if I go up to inventory, we've got the inventory is, is back, you know, in alignment. So same thing happens here. We did an adjustment inventory impact with the journal entry and then in March, we entered this one and we're back uh, good to go. So that X is good. So like if I look at my inventory report, then let's say I made my inventory report over here as of uh, 0.22823 and run it. So now I'm at 4.7. Let's pull out the trusty calculator. Trusty calculator. I'm at... 4746, which doesn't tie out as of the cutoff date to what's on here. It's at 
here it's at four, three, four, six, difference by 400. Why? Because I did an adjusting journal entry. And remember, anytime I do something to inventory, I should do it with an invoice or a sales receipt, or if I'm buying inventory with an expense check bill form. If I'm just entering a journal entry, I'm not adding the item and therefore I can throw it out of balance. So that's what I did, but I did it mindfully saying, okay, I know I'm gonna throw it out of balance because, because I'm trying to make the actual dollar amount correct as of that time frame. I know the inventory item that was impacted. I could adjust it. It was an ELP, I think. I could adjust it if I need to report the subledger, but I don't want to mess up QuickBooks subledger or anything like that, right? So I can't really report the item with the inventory. But then when I did the reversing entry, I'm back in balance. The 4346 ties out to what's on the subledger as of 031123. This is back to 4346. So we're good, we're good to go after after the reversing entry. Notice the sub ledger for, for the customers. If I run this, this one forces me to use the customer. So I couldn't post something to AR without posting to some customer. I didn't want to post to Anderson. Otherwise I would have some weird thing, invoice journal entries in here. So I put all the weird stuff, journal entries down into its own customer down here. Notice that these two net out to zero, but I don't have this nice connection thing. I can't really tie them out. It's still showing on my detail report, which is kind of ugly, right? So it's still kind of a messy thing down here because everything else, if I, if I netted out the invoice to a receive payment, QuickBooks would tie those two things out and wouldn't show them in this report as an open invoice. These two are back down to zero, but it's not netting these two things out. That's the problem. Now, if you don't want this ugliness down here, then you could create another accounts receivable account, but you would have to make it like an other current asset account. So there was no sub ledger related to it, just so you can put your adjusting entry into it. If you want to do that, that's okay. But this is kind of the workaround so that at least you don't have that ugly stuff in the actual customer. In other words, if I go to the first tab and I go down to the, the sales area, which is the customer center and go into the customers, which by the way, if you were in the book, the business view, that's under the get paid area, get paid and pay area, such a classy name. And it's in, it's in the customers. All right. Closing that back out. So then you got ZZZ down below. So this junk in here, these journal entries are not showing up in an actual customer and hopefully are down below and out of the way. That's the idea. All right, so it's going back up. I think I think that is uh, that is everything. So let's take a look at our reports. Tab into the right to do so. Right click and uh, let's duplicate it and let's check it out. Let's go down to our reports on the left. Open up some reports. Close the bookie. I'm going to type in the journal report. Journal. And let's do it as of the cutoff date, 0228.23, 0228.23, run it. And then I'm going to filter by journal entry, customize, filter, filter, and that's not filter, what? Filter. And then we're going to go by journal entry, run it. Okay, so there's our adjusting entry. Here's the big one we looked at. That's what we did last time. We then reversed it as of the first day of the following period. So I'm just going to go up one day to March to March 1st. Boom. There's the reversing entry. All right, let's open the trial balance to trial balance. Let's go to the uh, ham boogie reports, type in trial balance. And here we go. The balance is on trial again. We're on trial again. I'm always on trial. I'm sick of being on trial, man. 033123. And this is, let's see it on a month by month. We're going to go for the three, month, three months side by side. There's where we have it. So there's where we have it. This is the cutoff date. This is the month after the cutoff date when we did the reversing process to put the bookkeeper back where they want to be without messing them up, hopefully. 
And if your numbers tie out, great. If they don't, then I'm pretty sure that you messed up because my stuff is right. I feel like I feel like I did it right. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Sometimes I'm wrong every once in a while. But in any case, we'll do another journal entry report at the end of the adjusting entry process to further drill down on any differences so we can at least see what the differences are and then we can argue about who's wrong and who's right.